Hi there, me again. <clears throat> Michael, your friendly neighborhood animal circus soldier. So I'm going to do two videos this Wordy Wednesday. This is the first of them. Don't expect a lot of these two Wordy Wednesday videos because they're honestly not going to happen. But my girlfriend and I were having a conversation um, past couple days about the words that we use and how they define us and how they have meaning to us, with us, about us, and around us. So let's just have a conversation about how we, um, now, I'm using now the royal we. Um, um, um. Uh, we being not just stroke survivors or stroke patients or stroke victims um, or brain injury survivors, um, but chronic health care patients. And, and we'll get into a bit of that discussion um, because some of the language that can be used, um, either be it by professionals like doctors, uh, nurses, therapists, what have you, uh, or by support groups, uh, or by um, the people themselves, or the people around you, you might take offense, umbrage, to difficulty with. So, first off, let's just deal with the first word, the big V, not that one, victim, right? So... I'm not a victim of my stroke. You know, it, it's it's not like my stroke came up in the wee hours of the night, um, all villainous and in ne'er do well this fashion, and slapped me over the head and gave me a stroke. Didn't happen. Um, so I I I strongly dislike the word victim. I'm not a victim of my stroke. <laughs> you know, just like. You know, that, that's also, you know, like, and I'm not trying to belittle any anyone's situation here, but ask a, vic, a victim, quote unquote, um, of sexual assault. They were victimized. Yes, they're not a victim, right? Um, that's just sort of the, the socially lazy word that gets used. So I'm not a victim. Um, I didn't choose to have a stroke, and I'm not a victim to or because of it. I didn't choose to have aphasia, um, and I'm not a victim to or because of it. Uh, I didn't have anomia, or ask to have anomia, um, and I'm not a victim to that. I didn't choose to have PTSD. Like, it's not, you know, I didn't want PTSD. No one really wants it. Um, I didn't want to have it. I happened to get it, and... I'm not a victim to it. You know, uh, the other mental health issues and concerns I'm dealing with, I'm not a victim to them. I, I don't identify as those as victimizing me. Now, next word is patient. Apropos, you know, you are a stroke patient. When I go to a hospital for something to do with the actual stroke itself, yeah, I'm currently a patient in that hospital, be it uh, the neuropsychological, neuropsychiatric assessment I had in January, or the next one I have scheduled in May. In those cases, I'm definitively a patient. I'm here because of, in part, or in whole, due to my stroke. So I'm now a patient. All right. Um, suffer. Did I suffer a stroke? You know... No, I actually suffer the idiots around me because of my stroke. We'll get into that later. Um, sure, that in a manner of speaking, yeah, I did suffer because of my stroke, but that suffering was the actual stroke itself. Like, that was a shit sandwich. To be standing at work, kind of having some idea of what was going on, to being on the ground... To flurry of activity around me, to being loaded in the am. Now, about two and a half ish years before I had my stroke, I took at Fanshawe College in London, Ontario, the emergency tele telecommunications course. Because I figured if I'm going to work in a call center, I might as well make some good money. 
and I might as well use some of my experiences from the military because um, I can work a radio pretty well. Uh, and so when I'm loaded into the AM, I heard the radio net traffic of what was happening. Like, I'm a neuro reader at CTAS 2, and I'm like, shit, they're talking about me. <laughs> This is bad. This is definitively bad. But I couldn't say anything, right? And to the male paramedic that was in the back of the am with me, you were amazing. Right? You were a, a quiet professional when I could ask a question or charade my way through a question. You were great. So, thank you. I suffered at that period because I lost all meaningful control over portions of my body. So was I suffering then? Yeah, I'll give you that for maybe about five hours. I suffered through a stroke, but that's because I was having a stroke and the treatment therein. Um, I, I didn't, has my life changed because of my stroke? Yes. Hold on. Come here, buddy. Um... Has my life changed because of my stroke? Oh, definitely. But I'm not suffering because of it. So, except for maybe due to him. So, some of those words like um, victim, patient, sufferer, no. No. Um, survivor. <clears throat> and I've, I've said this in other videos as well. Survivor to me means you're barely hanging on like you're you're doing the bare minimum to maintain and effectively move forward that, that that's what survivor means to me i'm not surviving through this i'm not doing the bare minimum i'm not just phoning this one in hoping to god it'll get better that so i don't like the word survivor okay stroke warrior well i'm not putting on you know a helmet and plate belt kit, chest rig, and, you know, loading up a C7 and running down range to fight a stroke. So, I don't know, warrior? So, I like the word assaulter. Okay, so, my, my title is stroke assaulter because I'm getting up in the face of this bitch as often as I can and I'm dealing with it. Some days it doesn't look so pretty, right? So, that's why I call myself the stroke assaulter, right? And, and some of the terms that we use kind of have like a pejorative or a negative effect. Now let's talk about our caregivers. Oh, I heard the nails on the chalkboard in the background. Um, so our spouses, um, our partners, uh, immediate family and friends or people that live with you, are they a caregiver? Sure, if you break it down, they give care, yes. Um, so in the strict definition, yeah, they're a caregiver. Now, depending on your generation, caregiver may be an appropriate term. Uh, depending on your geographic or national location, uh, caregiver may be a correct term. But I know my girlfriend, um, she hates the term. She's not a caregiver. She's not a professional. She's not like a PSW or a DSW, a rehab therapy and support worker. She's not, she's not trained in providing care. Uh, so she... She hates the word caregiver. Now, in England, you'd be called a carer. A carer, right? Carer, carer, carer. Um, so, in England, they prefer the word carer. Again, for some people, that term is apropos. For some people, it's not. Um, now, some people, they want to make it a little bit more flowerly, and I don't know why. Uh, like, you know, um, life enhancer. I find that one a bit offensive. That means my life didn't was in needing of enrichment and enhancement. There's something wrong with my life to begin with. <laughs> you know. So, for the caregivers out there, and specifically what I mean is like the spouses, the partners, immediate family and friends, um, you get to define yourself. Right? Do, you, do you prefer partner in care? Kind of like a partner in crime. Uh, do you, and fun fact, if you happen to have an asphasiatic as your partner in care slash partner in crime, 
Odds are they're not going to rat you out, and if they do, it'll take a couple of extra hours because they can't get it out. You know? And me, I've got anomia. I'll just forget words. So you'll get time to run to the border. <clears throat> you know, get that new identity going on. So how do you perceive yourself? How do you, how do you let the words define you? And that can have a major impact on sort of how things proceed. Now, I'm going to use some of the terms I've learned in therapy. I'm not a licensed therapist. Apparently, Crash has decided he really wants to participate in the conversation from the other room, in this case, chair. Come here, bud. He's really noisy this morning, and I don't know why. Um, or something that apparently... Oh. So, how the words you use... So, stroke victim... Overgeneralization, oversimplification, completely. Stroke survivor, again, oversimplification, overgeneralization. Stroke warrior, well, I got problems with that one. Um, stroke patient, acceptable depending on kind of how, right? Um, I'm not a stroke patient today unless I show up to the hospital because of something due to my stroke or I show up to my GP or a, a specialty clinic because of my stroke, then I'm technically a stroke patient again, per se but it's more of a historical event. The only way I become a new stroke patient is new stroke, and I don't really want to do that. So you got to look at some of the language we use and how we describe ourselves. And, and in some cases, how we allow others to describe us. So when it, let's bring this back to the communication disorders. So am I surviving aphasia? anomia, and verbal apraxia. In some conversations, yeah, it takes a lot to survive that conversation because it got five minutes longer or got abandoned. Um, am I a victim due to anomia, apraxia, and aphasia? No. Some, conver con some, some conversations may be victimized because I'm not able to effectively get my message out or get your message in. Right. But again, it is what it is. You you can't be a victim by something you can't control. Right? I can't control the aphasia. I can't control the anomia. I can't control the apraxia. There, there's no way for me to effectively control when my brain decides to misfire. And that's essentially what it is. Your brain is misfiring. You know, um, I've done the treatment for it. And I continue to work. And there are days I'm an aphasia struggler, you know, I struggle with it because it has some secondary impacts at times. I struggle with aphasia, but no one would understand that and it would lead to more questions. What are you? I'm an aphasia struggler. How did you train for that job? Do I have to go to college? No, just have a brain injury. It's, it's pretty simple to get that job. So how you deal with the language that you describe yourself or people describe you with or your relationship with, they can have significant impact. So I encourage you to define yourself, right? Um, if, you know, you're comfortable with survivor, own it, wear it, use it. If you're comfortable with warrior, own it, wear it, use it. You know, if you're comfortable with the language that is being used to describe you, own it, wear it, use it. I have no problem with that. Where I have a problem with is when we allow people to identify our roles and assign a descriptor, a value to our roles, right? So just because you have aphasia doesn't mean you get some special designation, right? You still have the ability to use language to some extent, just because you have PTSD doesn't mean anything other than the fact that your brain betrays you on a regular basis and you have to learn to reintegrate you, the world, and your brain to like each other again, right? You know, so just because we have certain conditions, and that's just the term I'm going to use loosely, doesn't mean we have to let those conditions define us and provide a label to us, right? 
So that's my pontification um, on the first component of the Wordy Wednesday, um, the words that we use, and that's probably what I'll call this episode. So if you like what we've been watching, please like, share, subscribe. Please, down in the comments below, um, describe some of the words you prefer to use to describe and, and identify and label yourself as being someone with aphasia or anomia or PTSD or being a brain injury or stroke, fill in the blank. Um, if you know someone that's currently going through the throes of a stroke or brain injury or supporting someone going through the throes of a stroke or a brain injury, please like, share, subscribe, point the channel out to them. And if you happen to see a, someone around you or even in yourself, someone who immediately appears befuddled or confused or has lost their sense of balance, someone who has vision problems, they can't see it in one eye, they only see in grayscale, uh, they see a little dot in the world, someone who has facial droop, there's a noticeable visual slackening of the facial muscles, someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all, someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all, someone who has slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate language for situation or context, or you cannot understand language, right? Um, someone who has uh, general body weakness, weakness on one side, or the inability to stand unaided, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.